and welcome to Sun Coast Metropolitan Community Church. We are so glad you're spending your Easter Sunday with us. So happy Easter. Happy Easter. And here at Sun Coast, we strive to accomplish truth, trust, and transformation as we live into Easter people into our world. And if you are watching by live stream today, welcome. We are glad you're here. And if you are visiting this morning, especially for the first time, we are so glad that you chose Suncoast to spend your Easter Sunday with us. And we do have a gift for, gift for you. If you will uh, go to the lobby at our welcome counter afterwards, we have a gift of appreciation for you being here. And we hope that you will consider making Suncoast your church home. And I am especially happy today to be able to introduce my good friend, Ann Hope. Ann's right. So I have known Ann since I was 18 years old. We met at Oral Roberts University, of all places. <laughs> So who would know that all these years later, and you and I would be in Venice, Florida, at a metropolitan community church worshiping together on Easter Sunday. So That's I am true. so thrilled. Um, I love you deeply, Anne, and so happy that you're here today. Thank I know you. that the congregation is going to love you also. Thanks for having me, and I have stories to tell. <laughs> so let us go forward this morning to worship our resurrected Savior. Beginning, one with God the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name it is! What a beautiful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus you didn't want heaven without us so Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Christ my King what a wonderful name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival. Have no equal now and forever, God. You reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus 
Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Rise as you are able. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. And please remain standing for our opening processional. Christ the Lord is risen today. Woman, weeping in the garden, who has pushed the stone aside? Who has taken Jesus' body, Jesus Christ the crucified? Woman, walking in the garden, Jesus takes you by surprise. When the gardener calls you Mary, faith and joy meet in your eyes. Woman, dancing from the garden, find the others and proclaim. Easter morning, let, let us begin your way to rejoicing. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Remain standing, please, and share the peace of Christ with others. fun-loving group, so I'm going to ask you to be the drums today. Yeah? Good? 
except for I know Vicky has no rhythm. Now Gene, <laughs> Gene told me he did have rhythm, so um, I, I'm going to count on you, okay? Uh, but we're, you're going to sing along on the chorus with me. But part of the part of the song is is clap your hands and stomp your feet. So it's, I'll give you the rhythm, okay? So you have to start clapping with me. Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you hear that gospel beat cause it's all you'll ever need, all you'll ever need. Okay, you got it? Keep going, keep going because I'm worried you'll get messed up if I stop you. <laughs> okay, keep going. There's revival and it's spreading Like a wildfire in my heart Sunday morning, hallelujah And it's spreading all week long Can you hear it? Can you feel it? Well, it's the rhythm of a gospel song once you choose it, you can't lose it Cause there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy I got an old church choir singing in my soul I got a salvation and it's beautiful I got a heart overflowing I've been restored, oh There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy, no there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy You got it! When the valleys that I wander Turn to mountains I just can't climb Oh, you are with me I can't confirm it be you never There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy I got an old church Fire singing in my soul I got a sweet salvation It's beautiful I got a heart overflowing I've been restored Oh, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy Whoa, So clap your hands and stomp your feet Till you find that gospel beat Cause it's all you'll ever need All you'll ever need So clap your hands and stomp your feet Till you find that gospel beat It's all you'll ever need All you'll ever need Here we go I got an old church choir singing in my soul I got a sweet salvation It's beautiful Beautiful. I got an old church choir singing in my soul I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful I got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored oh, There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy Woo! You guys did great. <laughs> you guys are wonderful. Yippee ki yay ah. You know, when Jesus came, he, he said, I am the law. I define the law now. And all the Old Testament law, even though he said, it's still there. I came to fulfill the law. And the interesting thing in Matthew is when he, he came and he was giving his first sermon on the mount. He was giving it to followers and he said his one thing was every time he chose a disciple it wasn't get your life right. It wasn't you need to do this or you need to do that. The only thing when he called disciples to him was he said follow me. Follow me. And then when he gave that sermon, because they didn't know how to follow him other than walk with him, he said, this is how you follow me. The meek will inherit the earth. Peace 
love. What are the two greatest commandments? Love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. So he's teaching them to how to follow him. And he calls us to be disciples, each one of us, to follow him in our daily lives. And that means sometimes, doesn't mean sometimes, it means every day, taking up our cross and following him and denying ourselves. And, and that's so tough, especially in our in our society that we have here. So as we all strive, and I know I strive every day to become a better disciple, and there's a difference in believing because James tells us that even the demons believe, right? There's a difference between believing and following Christ. And um, I, it's a struggle every day, at least for me, to, to follow him and, and to let the fruit of his spirit inhabit my life because he says they'll know you're mine by the love that you show other people and by the fruit that you show other people and the fruit of the spirit patience love peace comfort those are the things it's so easy just to to fly off the handle at someone so as I as I sing this song it's a song of about how I really want to be different so that when others see me, they know that there is something different about me, that Christ has made a difference in my life, and that the fruit of the Spirit has really taken hold of me. I don't want to hear anymore, teach me to listen. I don't want to see anymore, just give me a vision That you could move this heart to be set apart I don't need to recognize myself in the mirror And I don't want to trade your plan for something familiar
different in me. Please rise as you are able for the reading of today's gospel, which is from the 20th chapter of John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he might rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Creator. But go to my brothers and sisters and say to them, I am ascending to my Creator and your Creator, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. May God bless this reading of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
letting me get my breath. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, choir. What a joy it's been to sing this Easter season. Good morning and happy Easter. happy Easter. Thank you so much, Anne, for joining us. And thank you to all the beautiful church mice who are here all week and especially yesterday morning, cleaning and decorating and getting ready for our wonderful experience. I learned years ago that in the Middle Ages it was customary for the priest to tell a joke before the sermon, because Easter was the day of all days we could laugh at the devil. And as you know, Reverend Vicki is the better joke teller. <laughs> so a short one, a blooper from an Easter service, Pastor Paul got up and said, well, this being Easter Sunday and such a special day, we will now ask Mrs. Cuthbert to come forward for the kids and lay some eggs on the altar. <laughs> I told you I wasn't the best joke. <laughs> Let's pray together. God, we love you and we are in awe of the meaning of this day. Thank you for gathering us together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, the Gospels say that while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the church. There was a full moon this morning as I got up, and, but I bet there wasn't a full moon that day. In other Gospels, a group of women come to dress the body, which is women's work. But John's Gospel kind of skips that part, and we see Mary alone at the tomb. John often tells stories of Jesus' transformative encounters with just one person. Or maybe all the women came to the tomb, but the other women fled when they saw the stone that had been rolled away. Mary is there alone. In John's account of the resurrection, she is there not to dress the body, but to grieve the loss of one who saved her life and who called her to follow him. In the very first sentence of the Easter story, there is the shock of the large stone placed at the entrance of a tomb that is completely rolled away. This would have been horrifying. Graves were sanctified places. Grave robbing was the lowest and meanest of crimes, and stones were meant to prevent that crime. Mary immediately runs back to the disciples and tells them, someone has taken Jesus' body. For her, this has become a crime scene, added to the terrible crime she witnessed on Friday, added to her terrible grief. Today, in our own world, we see waves of anti-Semitism and we see the desecration of Jewish cemeteries in our own country and around the world. About 12 years ago in Jamaica, a young gay man, the music director of our church in Kingston, was murdered. Friends buried him in secret at night in an unmarked grave. Homophobia was that lethal. When I was there, they brought me to the site to say a prayer for him 
And I saw them all looking over their shoulders, afraid that someone would see us, know where he was buried, and desecrate his grave. For the disciples, just being seen by the authorities hanging around Jesus' grave would have been intimidating and dangerous. The story continues with running to and from the grave that first Easter with a beloved disciple outrunning Peter. Peter must have been older and not as in good shape. <laughs> the beloved disciple peeks in, sees the linen grave clothes, but does not go in. Was he a little afraid? Was he not wanting to go in ahead of Peter? Twice it mentions the detail of the linens lying there and then the headcloth rolled up and folded in a different place. They return home, still confused and in fear. And then the story shifts back to Mary, still there weeping, and it says she bends down because this grave could have been dug deep into the earth, not just at eye level. She bends down to look in and she sees two angels on the bench where the body had been. It says head and foot. This reminds us of the angels at the foot and head of the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat where the glory and presence of God resided. The author of the Gospel of John knows that and is helping us to see Jesus, life, death, and resurrection as a new mercy seat. And the angels ask her, woman, why are you weeping? She says they've taken him, robbers or enemies of Jesus and his followers. I think about what really happened that morning before dark. Something happened in that tomb. No human witnesses, except perhaps these two angels. Did they wake him up? Did they, were, there wait, were they there waiting for him, helping him to take off his grave clothes, helping him in, into that new resurrected body to the new clothes of a gardener? And it's no accident that the cemetery is a garden. The beginning of all creation in Genesis started in a garden, and the new creation, that is Jesus, starts in this garden as well. After the angels speak, Mary suddenly senses a presence of someone behind her, turns around, sees whom she supposes to be the gardener, who asks her the very same question, woman, why are you weeping? Mary, who had been healed of, by Jesus of demons, is struggling with her grief, knowing, not knowing it was Jesus in her weepy voice, she asks for Jesus' body so she can bring it to safety, not wanting to keep her in suspense anymore. Jesus simply says her name, Mary. Mary, who perhaps had had some mental illness or who had found her way back to sanity and love and joy, who had been teetering on the edge that morning, hears her name. This is the most poignant and powerful encounter of all the Gospels all over the world today, this story will be read to 2.18 billion Christians in hundreds of languages, all recalling this moment. God chooses this unlikely woman, a woman who had been broken and healed, who had come into a profound relationship of love with her creator and savior. Jesus chose her to be the first witness to his resurrection. You know, God could have chosen a Pharisee, a lawyer, or a doctor, or a crowd of mourners, but God chose this vulnerable one who had been rescued and redeemed to be the first. As one writer says, Mary's name has been spoken by the one whose voice she thought she would never hear again. And she shouts out, Rabbi, teacher, it doesn't say this, but I imagine that she threw her arms around him. And he says to her, don't hold on to me, Mary. Go, run, tell the others. She left. I can't imagine how hard it was to do that, to leave him and to run and tell them. Scripture says the disciples were skeptical, maybe even jealous, but later that day and in the days to come, he would appear to all of them and many others on the road to Emmaus in the upper room in Galilee. But the first clue of the resurrection is a stone that's been rolled away from an empty tomb, an empty tomb that proclaims that life 
is victorious over sickness, evil, and death. 2,000 years later, there are still stones to be rolled away. Amen. First is a stone of hatred and rejection. In Hattiesburg, Mississippi, MCC's church, Joshua Generation MCC, has a slogan. It's very simple. It says, faith, not hate. It's a church full of young people who grew up, some of them with Christ versions of Christianity poisoned by prejudice and hate. If it's not love, it's not God. The stone of hatred and rejection is still way too large and heavy. Many children and young people are taking their own lives because they are bullied, pelted with stones of hatred and rejection, many of whom don't know that there is a God who is with them and who celebrates that they are different and want to be different in Christ. Too many transgender people are getting the message <clears throat> that they are not whole or complete or welcome in God's house. Too many of whatever gender or sexual orientation are still shamed because of who we are or what happened to us, many turned off by a church that betrayed them. Reverend Barbara Brown Taylor warns us, Jesus was not killed by atheism and anarchy. He was brought down by law and order mixed with religion, always a deadly mix. Beware of those who cannot tell God's will from theirs. The people of Sri Lanka know that this morning, where three churches were bombed and three hotels hundreds and hundreds killed and wounded on this day of all days. This is how religion becomes a tool of hatred and violence. This is our calling to say, if it's not love, it's not God. Second is the stone of indifference. Love and compassion sometimes seem in too short supply in our world. This week, as the world was shocked by the burning of the Cathedral of Notre Dame, and there was an outpouring to rebuild, others called on the world to also remember three humble African-American churches in Louisiana, destroyed by arson and racist hate. As indifference gave way to action, the world has responded, and millions have now been raised to help them also rebuild. Compassion inspires compassion. Generosity inspires more generosity. The worst thing that can happen is that we become numb and stop caring. There is no, not a choice between Notre Dame and churches in Louisiana. There is no limit to what we can do when our indifference is overcome. Just this week, I heard about uh, an MCC colleague. I mean, an MCC colleague reached out to us and told us about Reverend Steady Phillips, who I've known for probably 25 years, she used to be on the MCC Global staff, and she had just taken a position as pastor of a struggling MCC church in Louisville, Kentucky. As she was moving across country, driving her own moving van with all of her worldly possessions in it, she stopped overnight, and the next morning, everything was stolen from her van except the twin bed. Everything else. There was probably not one of us, especially MCC pastors, who could not identify with Reverend Stedney in some way or another. We've all been there, taken a risk, said yes to God, and then some disaster or calamity or challenge shook us. Stedney would never ask for help, so a colleague reached out to us and so that all of us uh, would know that she would know that all of us have her back as she steps into the pulpit for the first time today, Easter Sunday. Immediately, a retired pastor sent her Easter vestments and offers of help began to pour in. I could feel the momentum and the immense love from a group of people who are not known to be wealthy. But we knew that even before a single gift arrived, the expressions of compassion, the caring, the promise of help, made a profound difference. And I'm so grateful for what God is about to do in Louisville and with Reverend Stedney. Indifference dries up every resource, but love and compassion are multipliers. 
Jesus lived this and taught this, and it is what makes us connected to God to know that. The resurrection of Jesus was the most profound gift from the glory of God who raised him up so that we might be raised with him to heal, to care about a world that God so loves. And last of all, there's the stone of disbelief. We are sometimes just too sophisticated for our own good. Our Christian faith does not say, well, Jesus' disciples loved him and remembered him and probably had some kind of a hallucination that he was still really there. Our faith tells us, actually, that something transformative happened at the cellular, cellular quantum level, <laughs> at the core of being and reality itself beyond our understanding. You know, the best scientists in the world know that at the heart of the universe is mystery. One of those mysteries we got a glimpse of recently, uh, the black hole, the first one we've ever seen. But we know that we've just scratched the surface of the profound mysteries of life and death and creation. Our faith says death could not hold the love of God in Jesus in the grave. He burst out in defiance and glory. In doing that, Jesus said to his followers, to us today, everything I told you about God is true. Every healing that happened was real. And everything you left everything for was not in vain. Stedney Phillips, everything you left everything for was not in vain and nothing is too hard for God. We need an Easter faith in our world, in our country, in our houses of worship. We all need to be surprised by grace, the love of God, by stones that are rolled away, by miracles and the power of faith to change lives and history. I've been privileged to see that all my life in little things and in big things. Suncoast MCC, let us be about removing stones of hatred, rejection, indifference, and disbelief. Happy Easter. Alleluia. Amen. And now let's welcome and hope. What is All right. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh. All right. Um, you know, when Jesus ascended to heaven, we rejoice on Easter because he was risen from the dead, and then he, he ascended to heaven. And the last thing he said to his disciples, when you think about it, it's kind of a, a, an amazing thing that this man lived and, uh, and this son of God lived and, and died for us. And yet he didn't build some mega church while he was there. In fact, he kind of shunned the crowds and he poured himself into 12 men while he was there. He just poured his whole life into them, knowing that they in turn hopefully would pour their lives into others. And, and that's what being a disciple of Christ is all about. It's not about building a megachurch. It's not about all the, all the religion in the world. It's about pouring your life into another person. And I do not know for the life of me why God chose to do that through human beings because I think he could probably convert a lot more people with a burning bush than with a broken person like me. Um, I don't know why he chose to use us, but his, his amazing, it, it always amazes me about his reckless love, which is the title of this song. It, he has this amazing reckless love that's just, it, it, we can't even comprehend it sometimes. And it just, we need to realize how very desperate we are for that, that love in our lives and be so thankful that he's there. spoke a word you were singing over me 
You have been so, so good to me Before I took a breath You breathed your life in me You have been so, so kind to me love of God Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found Leaves the 99 I couldn't turn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming never-ending reckless love of God When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found Leaves the 99, I couldn't turn it, I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down, no lie you won't tear down Coming after me, I'll be overwhelming Never-ending, reckless love of God Oh, he chases me down, fights till I'm found Leaves the 99, I couldn't turn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God Living colors 
flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder, blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Yeah, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings you are my everything and I will adore you with wonder awestruck wonder at the mention of your name Jesus your name is power breath and living water such a marvelous mystery yeah. holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. God tells us we are more than conquerors. And a lot of people in, in life believe that all God's promises are for them, right? But the promises God gives in Scripture are really for those who are His followers. And that's what they fail to know. We are more than conquerors. And if God is for us, who can be against us, right? Even if we don't have it go our way, the way we always want it. They say sometimes you win some. Sometimes you lose some. But right now, right now, I'm losing back. Well, I've stood on the stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be all right. But right now, right now, I just can't. Well, it's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down. But what will I say when I'm held to the flames like I am right now? I know you're able and I know you can save through the fire with your might. Hand. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. Oh, they say it only takes a little faith to move a mountain. Well, good thing a little faith is all I have right now. But God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable, oh, just give me the strength to 
to be able to say it is well with my soul oh, I know you're able and I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand but even if you don't my hope is you alone I know the sorrow and I know the hurt would all go away if you just say the word but even if you don't my hope is you alone you've been faithful you've been good all my days Jesus I will Cause I know you're able And I know you can Oh, I know you're able And I know you can Save through the fire With your mighty hand But even if you don't My hope is you And I know the hurt would all go away If you just say the word But even if you don't My hope is you alone It is well with my soul It is well who need healing for various reasons. Let us lift up our voices out loud with the names of individuals who need our prayers. The people of Sri Lanka. Bread. places in this world that are not experiencing the cup of freedom. Let us lift our voices out loud with the names of places in the world that need our prayers. Our country. <coughs> Sri Lanka. For you are for us, O oh, live 
living Christ, have mercy, for you will heal us. Oh, tender God, have mercy, for you are for us, for you are for us. Tender, merciful God, we give you thanks for the gift of this community journeying together in the season of the resurrection. We pray for our church, our denomination, and our sister church, the Circle MCC. Hear our prayers for healing those less fortunate than us. Help us to recognize, embrace, and share our freedoms that you have blessed us with. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I myself, the board, and the pastors of the church want to thank you so much for your Easter giving. We have now raised over $24,000 for our new roof and needed repairs for the church. We are, however, still accepting your Easter offering, which is this envelope that is orange with uh, the cross on it we still need very much need money but I also don't want you to forget this white envelope because this is our uh, weekly offering which we need very much for the uh, money to run this church and I'm asking all of y'all to not forget this church. This is our Notre Dame. All right. We want you to feel that you are always welcome here, but how much of a blessing is it that we are a church accepting of everyone. Not one person could be turned away from this church. How lucky we are to have a God that we can come to and that we can say that where other people turn pe places, turn people away. How much of a blessing it is for us to accept all. Please give. We need to keep this church going. We need our Notre Dame keep going. Life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. You give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore. Every heart that is broken, great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you 
only All the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry These bones will sing Great are you Lord All the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry These bones will sing Great are you Lord All the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry These bones will sing Great are you Lord It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise Pour out our praise It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise to you only It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise Pour out our praise It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise to you only And please remain standing for our doxology. Ale, 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 luya. Ale, 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 luya. Ale, ale, luya. Ale, luya. Ale, luya. Ale, ale, ale. We gather around this table as witnesses to the resurrection. Therefore, as renewed, redeemed, and enlivened people of God, we take up the cup of freedom. I will take, will take the cup, cup of freedom and call on the name of God. I will take the cup of freedom and call on the name of God. The holy living God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your voices to proclaim this great love. It is right and a good thing and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, living God. You created us to proclaim your love to all, and so we raise our voices in praise, saying, Holy, 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 holy God, God of power and might, the power is all the earth. Blessed is Jesus, our risen Savior. Hosanna, God on high. We remember the life and ministry of Jesus who healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with the outcast, walked dusty roads to preach love and peace. And in this proclamation of the angel is risen from the grave. It was at this table that Jesus issued the invitation to gather together to live as Easter people with a hope-filled future and take up the cup of freedom as we sing. Oh. 
I will take the cup of freedom and call on the name of God. I will take the cup of freedom and call on the name of God. divine it will set you free this cup of freedom I will take up and I will call on the name of God I, I will, will take, take the, the cup, cup of freedom and call on the name of God I will take the cup of freedom and call on the name of God. God of all, just as the spirit of life embodied Jesus in the tomb, so now breathe your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of the earth. As we eat this bread and drink from this cup, may we be empowered, open, and free to engage your love and your passion for life. We pray in the name of Jesus, our risen Savior. Amen. Please rise as you are able to sing together the prayer that Jesus taught us. <clears throat> it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. or with family and friends to eat and drink, to be nourished and renewed. This is an open table and all are welcome, regardless of your church membership. All, all are welcome, no exceptions. This table is ready. Come to the welcome feast prepared by Jesus. Come and receive the gifts of God. Come, take the cup of freedom. take the cup of freedom and call on the name of God. I will take the cup of freedom and call on the name of God. I will take the cup of freedom and call on the name of God. I will take the cup of freedom 
and call on the name of God. Trusting you, oh. 
is risen, Christ 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 is risen. I will praise you, 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 I will praise you. God, in the breaking of the bread, you've been made known to us as our crucified and risen Savior. We are full today, and we are free, filled with your love and with your life. May we go from here to share with the world, we have seen Jesus. In your holy name we pray, amen. amen. Please rise for our recessional song, Because You Live. Amen. Amen.